gas and brakes. One on the left and one on the right. If we had double controls, and I sit on the left hand side and you're on the right hand side. You want to take your car independently of me wherever you want, right? Because you're in control. You're in control, right? Let's say you want to take the car to the north and I want to take the same car to the south. I'm in control. But we're talking about gods, not about people. Gods no. have a different... Like, no, no, let, let, let's understand something. Let's understand something. If we have two people with independent will, like, I'm not going to listen to you because I am myself. you saying the same thing. Where is the car going to go? It's not going to go to north or south. If there were a God who is independent, he doesn't need to say, oh, another God, oh, can I, can I, can I make another universe? Oh, please, please. He doesn't beg. He is, he's all... No, 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 no. I'm talking about a God Either this God is all-powerful, independent and sovereign, or not. If you have a God who says, I can't do anything, I have to listen to the other God, then that is not God. By God, we mean a being who is absolutely self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. So, if you have two gods who are self-sufficient, one God says, I want now the sun to come up and be dead. And the other God says, now I want it to be night now. What's going to happen? You just asked the right thing. But, uh, no, 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 think about it. You, uh, in any case, you talk about like different gods. No, no, I'm because saying... have a different opinion, so different mind. What, what, what is your name? Alina. Alina, I'm Mansour. Now, Alina, what I was showing as an example, if we had more than one god who is in control, self-sufficient, independent, all-powerful, there will be a conflict of will. Like I had a conflict of will with you in the car. And this conflict of will will ruin the universe. The whole universe will be destroyed because they were not going to listen to each other. Eventually, what we'll have is the one who is most all-powerful will remain. Imagine one god says, I want to destroy all the other gods. He's able to do that. Then he's not all-powerful. By definition, God has to be all-powerful. So if you have a god who can't destroy another god, he's not god. That's why polytheism or belief in many gods is not rational, it's not reasonable, it's not intellectual. The only belief that makes sense to us here and here is one absolute God. That is the belief your heart and your mind will accept because there is no contradiction in that. Any belief which says, oh, there's many gods, we can disregard that to be false because that is not the reality. The reality is how many gods are in control, who can see it? If there are many gods in control, the universe will collapse and then be ruined. But look at how precisely the sun is orbiting, the earth is orbiting, whole universe is following a particular law, the natural law that has been within this universe. How, how the water defies gravity because of this capillary section and goes up the root of the tree to the... All laws regulated, put forth by a designer, one controller. The universe demonstrates there is one God. Yes, but in any case, you cannot tell like, uh, um, people who believe in Christianity or who believe in Islam or uh, something else. Like, but uh, do you agree? Elena uh, or Elena did you sort of name? I think uh, uh, your point is right, hmm. but uh, I don't believe like uh, some part of your speech when you talk like people who believe in different gods, they are stupid because... Uh, I didn't say stupid. No. I said... The belief, okay, ask, is it Alina or Alina? Alina. Alina. If I say this camera is God, this camera created this universe, you have all the right to ask me. I mean, why? But you're in the no, 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 no. You're not going to say like, oh, I'm crazy and stupid. You can ask me. If you know that I'm quite sensible, you can say, why do you believe that? If I am not able to give you any valid reasons, you would say, how can you believe in a man made camera and said this is the camera that made the universe you would say it's not believable it's not reasonable to believe so that belief so would my belief be true though that this camera made the universe it cannot be true it cannot be true but for you for you not for me not for me not for me not for me not not for me this is not about subjective belief i can believe in anything anything in reality 
in reality, in reality, this camera did not make this universe. Yeah? So one can believe that this camera made this universe, but it doesn't make... We will, we will go by one by one, but at least objectively, in reality, we can demonstrate that this camera did not make this universe. There might be people who believe in that, there might be people who believe in many gods, but in reality, that is not objectively verifiable. In fact, we can demonstrate otherwise. We are not saying these people are fools. We are saying these people don't believe in the truth. This is just a belief. They believe by blindly or without critical thinking. So when it comes to believing God having sons or daughters, again, same kind of emotional attachment. Not reasonable belief from the mind and the heart, but it's all about attachment to what your forefathers believe, what your church tells you and so on. So if I come to you and tell you, you know what? God has a mother and a sister. You'll be wondering, what does it even mean? God has a mother and a sister. But if people believe in it, say, I believe in it because a book says so. But religion, it doesn't function like uh, that you can do uh, like uh, real books. Yes. You cannot do like We can, we can, we can. That is, uh, what, that is what the secularism, atheism, the people who follow that, they want to put forward this narrative that you cannot prove the existence of God. You cannot prove the validity of your religion. That narrative comes from the secular atheistic worldview. What we do in Speakers Corner, if you watch our videos, you will see we precisely dismantle this claim with the atheist. I have discussed with so many atheists, so many other people have. Dismantling this claim that no, we can establish that there is a creator who is one and absolute, who is in control, who created all of this. It's establishable. So when we. Yeah, yeah. I feel bad. I can like uh, sit alone in a silent room and uh, just talk to him. Uh, now I can. But Alina, when we say we have our own religion, it is, I think, useful to sometimes think, am I on the right religion? Because I may be following the wrong religion. Like many people who worship a camera and say this is God, or worship a tree. Do you know many Hindus? They were recently worshipping, um, what is it? It's a bicycle stand or something? I don't know. They, they worship trees and snakes and they represent the mountains of God, representation. So we know many people worship the creation. We need to ask, did they ask them? They need to ask, are they on the right religion? So you can say, look, I have a religion. My father, my mother believed in it. But was that the right religion though? We have to ask because now we come to an age where we are together interacting with different religious faiths and belief systems. Because we are exchanging information from our respective faith and ideologies, we need to be aware of it and say, actually, am I believing the right thing? Because you'll be surprised. I'm a Muslim. In the Quran, the God who revealed this Quran reprimands, takes people to task, those who say, I'm going to stick to my forefather's belief. For instance, what if they were wrong? So don't just believe in what your parents believed and parents tell you. What if they were wrong? Are you going to stick on believing in it? So the Quran reprimands. Quran wants us to use our brains, our critical thinking. Can you ask you uh, one question? Like, uh, uh, you're a Muslim, okay? So uh, why Allah like, brings a war to Ukraine? Why it happens? Why wars happen? Wars happens. Okay. So God has, Allah has created mankind and given them the laws to live by. These laws are beneficial for human societies to live as a society, as a community. Because individually, do you need any law? If you're all by yourself in a jungle, there's nothing else. You don't need any law. Law for who? Who are you interacting with? But when there's someone else, you need to know how you behave, how you talk. Do you steal from them or do you say a word which is true or do you deceive them? Laws are necessary when we are in a community. Of course, when you're alone, you do need laws. But if you think about it, in a community, it's more, more necessary to have laws so that we can live in prosperity, we can live in tranquility, we can live in happiness and no problem suffering. No one's going to come and kill me, steal from me, insult me, mock me, take my job or whatever, my, destroy my house, bulldoze my house, take my land. We need laws. So when God gives these laws, he does that out of his mercy. So that I don't have to go and trial and see which one's better. God gives us this 
for granted and says live accordingly. Do not cheat. Do not lie. Do not bring false witness. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill unjustly and so on. All of this are values which everyone can aspire to and say, oh, this is a good thing. But, but what happens is some people don't want to believe in the laws of God because they have their ego and their desires and other things are influenced by them. For example, they see a nice car and say, okay, now I'm going to steal it because I don't have one. Then they take the right away of someone else. Now imagine you have a country and they see another country. They come in, occupy the country and take its resources and enslave the people because of greed. This happened. Did it, did it happen? America went to Iraq. Is it because they had mass destruction weapon? There were no weapons. There was no evidence for it. But they went there, looted the country, destroyed their culture and the civilization, and look at what they have done. This is all about greed, political greed, because Iraq had oil and gas. Would they do that to England? They wouldn't do that to England. Yeah? So wars happen because people are greedy and they want to usurp and they want to take the rights of others and so on. So sometimes war can be because of this. But God gives us rules and regulations how to conduct if this happens. But if you're going to fight, fight for justice. Don't go and fight for greed. So I'm going to fight and then take their land. No one. In Islam, we have a concept of jihad, which is opening up another land so that people can see the justice of Islam. Not to oppress the people, but to remove oppression. To establish justice. That is why this will be the only one example in the history of mankind. When the Muslim armies went and they opened up another country, the people who were conquered, they joined the army to the next round to another country. Everywhere else, when Alexander the Great came and took over the land, when he left, they were saying, oh, thank God they're gone. They didn't join them because they were you know, now saying, oh, now they're gone, right? They didn't join and say, let me open up. In Islam, this happened. Because they knew that this is for the truth and not about greed or about desires. This is establishing justice on earth. Islam, if I want to tell you one word, is about justice. Maintaining justice between your own self, between your spouse, between man and woman, between the societies. The Quran says, be a firm witness, even if it goes against you and your kith and kin, your relatives. No favoritism. The Prophet Muhammad... No, no, stand firm in justice. When you're going to be a, a witness, speak the truth. Don't just, you know, just imagine, your brother kills someone. The judge asks you for witness. You're going to say, you're going to lie? No, no. He killed it because he didn't like the other guy. So I will tell the truth. Right. Islam says otherwise. Establish justice. In fact, you'll be surprised how the degree of this message is put forward. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our prophet of God, he said, even my daughter Fatima, if she were to steal, what would you do? Cut her hands off. Even if the daughter of the Prophet did that, she's not going to be spared. Of course, she would not do that, but Prophet is teaching us a lesson. Even if it was her, but how close can, can anyone be than the daughter of the Prophet? He says, no. No favoritism. Nothing where you actually demonstrate that you are going to commit injustice to society. So justice demands that Everyone has the share of justice without being violated their rights and so on. So, in an Islamic society, we have the rights of a non-Muslim citizen and their rights are protected by the state. In other countries, go to Palestine, occupied Palestine. Do they have any rights? Their land's been taken away, their lives been taken away. International community doesn't give a damn. Do you know why? Why did the international community become so silent when Israel commits all these atrocities, for example? If Palestinians commit atrocities, we will be the first one to say, wrong, you cannot commit atrocities to another human being, even if it be against the Israelis. But when Israelis commit all this aggression and atrocities, the whole world is silent. 
So this is something that we need to really open up to and say, why is this happening? Why have they made this rule called anti-Semitism law? That you can't talk anything against it, you'll be put behind bar, you'll be punished. Look at how they've done it. They even made it illegal. But Arabs are Semite people too. When an Arab is insulted, does anyone take them to court and say, no, you, 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 you have to be a Jew. So that's how society has somehow been in the hands of certain people. The rich of this world is in the hands of certain people. Islam says, no, you cannot let people die in starvation and hunger. They have a right in your wealth. Your neighbor has a right of, over you. A believer, it's not like this. The Prophet said, you are not a believer. You are not a believer. You are not a believer if you go be fed and your neighbor starves in hunger. You're not even a believer. This is how much the right, in fact, the, the companions of the Prophet were asking, I mean, how much do they want me? They were even thinking yes, like, like a very bad person who kills someone, why you will beat him? No, 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 no. Like this, you know? We're not talking about the exceptionally bad people. We're talking about a neighbor of a Muslim who's not a Muslim, could be a Jew, Christian, atheist, whoever. The companions of the Prophet were even thinking, are they going to even inherit from you? That is the level of you know, how Islam is giving right to the people. We have a concept called zakah. 2.5% of our surplus wealth will be given to the poor and the needy. It's there right on our wealth. The more you have, the more you're going to give. When Islam was implemented, you'll be surprised by one of the Khalif, Omar bin Abdul Aziz, if I'm not mistaken. He was trying to find someone to give zakat to. Someone poor that he can give the zakat to. He was struggling to find someone because people were mass, uh, this, the wealth was distributed in such a way, justice was implemented in such a way, the economic system was implemented in such a way that people were not left poor and to die as poor. That is what Islam makes the society function. So when at one point, 100, not 100 years ago, in a few decades ago, in, in Saudi Arabia, people would cover their merchandise, how valuable they are, how expensive they are. When the call of prayer came, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Time to pray. They will leave and go to the masjid, go to the mosque. There is no video cameras. There is no security guards. It's not a locked thing. What made them have that confidence and trust? Because people were educated that they are not going to steal. Islam has methods and mechanisms of ensuring that crimes doesn't happen. If it does happen, it has mechanisms to stop that. That is why when Islam gives certain penalties, it gives grievous penalties in comparison to the degree of the crime. I'll give you an example. If England tomorrow said the penalty for killing someone is 10 pounds, 10 British pounds, do you think the killing will remain the same, decrease or increase? No, I think increase. In, uh... Increase? I got 50 pounds. I'll, I'll get away with five murder. That's what people will think. It will not stop. But if I said, if you kill someone, your life will be taken in return. People will think twice. It will act as a deterrent. That's why in Islam, the punishment system of certain crimes are harmful, which goes against your reason, crime against your reason, your dignity and honor, your life, your wealth, your property, and so on. Only those crimes so that the society can function peacefully. That is why when people look at the, the Sharia, the Islamic law, sometimes they don't think, why is, it so, why is it so harsh? The reason it's harsh is to protect you from those people who want to take away your rights. So when we talk about, okay, why no other religions? We believe because there's one God, there's always been one religion. God did not send different religions to different people. And one thing you'll be surprised to hear, God said he does not punish a nation until he sends a messenger. Sounds just to me, because how can you punish a nation when they didn't even know what to do? But God said he has sent nation, all nations are the prophet and the messenger. That means all the previous prophets 
and messengers that came, they came with the same message. The Quran says so. They all came with the same message, worship God, one and only, and avoid worshipping the false gods. Whether it be creation, whether you ascribe a partner to God or whatever. That was the message. So what happened then? Why do we have so many different religions? It's because whenever the Prophet was there, they were following the religion of God, which is Islam, meaning sincere and willing to the will of God. And the one who did this is called a Muslim. So when Abraham came, the Prophet, you know about Abraham? When he came, he sincerely and willingly worshipped one true God and followed the will of one true God. So in Arabic, we would say, this is a Muslim. And when he asked people to believe in that, so that is, he's brought Islam to the people. So this is what happened. But as time went by, people tried to come away from this message. Yeah, and that is why the religious messages from the same one God gets changed and corrupted. And that's why we see differences today in various religions. They made Jesus God? No, they didn't make the Jesus like a God. They made the Jesus like a, uh, I don't know, overview of the God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at him and in, speaker, in Speaker's Corner, Alina, you will see many people say, if you ask, who, who is Jesus? And you know what they will tell you? He's God. They made Jesus God along with God. So the Quran says, this is a mistake. But I don't want to say like uh, uh, any religion is a mistake. People believe in it and uh, they are independent. They can choose in what belief, you know? Even if it's to their detriment, even if it's to their bad consequence. If you yes, see... Even if okay, Alina. Like every religion like send a message that uh, be good, uh, don't steal, don't kill someone. Every religion tell you that you need to be like a good person, you know? Yeah, Have but that's the commonality. But the, the other things about religion, it says like, oh, you have, to believe, you have to believe that God died for you. You don't have to believe. Like, you need to choose are, in what they Yeah, but there are certain you things. You can choose uh, Islam, you can choose uh, yeah. Christianity, you can choose... Uh, but is God happy with that approach? If you Do will be a good person, you okay. also you. Like, okay. if you will be a okay, good okay, person. Okay, okay, okay. So, so imagine, okay, imagine you don't like football. You don't like football. No, I don't. And someone gives you a smelly boot they should know what you like or not so if you want to worship god would you worship god the way you like or the way god appreciates and god is happy with it's complicated. No, it's simple alina you should worship the god the way god accepts not what you think there were there are many people who eat their own Spe feces and excrements showing that this is a form of worship of God. God doesn't approve of that. So God would not approve of that. No, in any case, uh, when we will die, we will see what, what happens. Yes. In any case, that's why in any case, just be a good uh, person, yeah. make a good things and think about you and people around you. Like, yeah. To bring but, them, uh, but Alina, the idea that it's okay if you are following good or not, you have to follow God's rule, his regulations, completely, not partially. Where is the rule of God now, today? Who has that rule and regulation and teaching, which is not corrupted? Because you might find in the Day of Judgment that this rule that you are following is a corruption of the rule that God sent, because man changed it. Man changed the rule and say, you can give interest. Like, if I want to borrow some money, 1,000 pounds, and he said, I'll oh, give me 2,000 pounds back with interest. What if God tells you that I never make this rule because it's unjust? Exploitation, greed, and you followed that rule, he says, okay. That is the problem. We have to know what is the teaching of God now. And that's what we're saying is the Quran says, it is the final book from God with the final message through the final messenger. All we have to do is scrutinize this message, the messenger, the book, and then accept it. And then you will be confident in what you are doing in terms of worship of God because then you will have tranquility because otherwise you don't even know oh, what I'm following this book I'm following book by Harry Potter is it indeed from God or not tranquility in the heart comes from certainty of knowledge when you know the Quran is from God certainly there are objective reasons why one can believe that the Quran is from God not just 
because the Quran says so, but objectively, because sometimes you want to know evidence that this is the case. Listen, a judge in a court of law needs to see evidence for a murder. He can't just simply say, I had a dream yesterday and I think you're guilty. He can't do that. He has to establish evidence that this man was the guilty. He's the criminal. He has seen video footages or he's seen the, the crime scene and he's the evidence of his fingerprints, the knife, whatever. Likewise, whatever we're going to believe, it's not just because oh, he says some good things about it. What evidence does it have to make sure it's from God? Does that make sense? That's what the Quran does. The Quran gives you the evidences. Yes, but if you will like born in a, any country which is another religion, you will believe uh, this religion. Internet is available. Information yes. is available. Yes. Your friends no, are available. Yes, uh, but in previous times, no. In so. previous times, do you know what happens? In previous times, if anyone did not hear about the true message of Islam of God, God is not going to punish them just like that. God is going to ask them, did they use their intellect? This is in one of the chapters of the Quran, Surah Al-Mulk. God says, yes, so, so did they not the use their aql, their yes. intellect? Yes, because of the internet and uh, like globalization, we have uh, a lot of uh, information now and we can choose in what belief. Yeah. So, but even in the past, people, if they didn't have that information, God will account them by taking into account, did they use the intellect that God provided? If you, if you and I use our intellect correctly, we would not worship a bicycle or a tripod or a camera or a tree or the sun or the planet. We will say there is a creator of all of that. We'll worship that creator. So those people, if they didn't hear anything about Islam, anything about Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and if they use their mind properly and worship one God, and they said, whoever you are, you are the creator, they are the ones who are successful. God is not going to be unjust to them in his, in his judgment. Even those people who didn't see anything about this, this is how the judgment will be done. So today we are in a situation where we are, we have that availability of information. We cannot be excused for not knowing it or not thinking and criti critically analyzing it. So Alina, as you now have heard something about Islam, you should now take it one step further. Okay. Does that make sense? Is it true? Because if it's going to this religion and for every religion. For me, uh, I cannot put uh, one of the top and one of the But every religion cannot be the true at the same time because they contradict yes. each other. Yes, that's that it. That's why I have my own religion. I don't believe in any religion. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe in one creator like and uh, I'm taking care about myself. I know that I will not steal something. I will not harm someone. Uh, and uh, I know how to be a good person and I try to follow my, my own rules. Uh, Your your rules, you said so. Your own rules. How about following God's rules? Has God given you the rules to live your life by? Yes, if I like. Uh, Where are those rules? I have my own rules. Like, the, yeah, that's the problem. We cannot use our own rules and think that God will be happy with our own rules. But if God bring me such a thoughts, I think this is also a reason. No, no, God has given you the critical thinking and say, look, if you use your own rules, there are many people who use their own rules and they will be contradictory believing contradictions. Yes, but I'm still a good person. What? <laughs> who de who, who, who defines what is good or bad? Who defines what is good or bad? For example, well, for it, it, to I give know you an example. Would you follow? Would you follow the rules of, say, example? How do you have a married life? Do you have relationship before marriage or after marriage? Do you see those things? You might feel that it's okay if I sleep with someone, but is God happy with that rule? Yes, in, in every religion it does. No, no, God. is God happy with that rule? Because there are people who think in their own rules and I'm going to sleep with my partner first before I get married because I don't know how my partner is. Many people do that. So if people take their own rules like this, it, they're not going to arrive at the truth. That's what the point I'm making. I can only, because you have to go. Like, uh, sleep with other girls wrong, then... wrong. They will be accountable for what they're doing. That is why, if you read the Quran, you can be certain that this is from God, and that certain will make you and liberate you from all this confusion. I can only request you to open up the Quran and really verify it. Try to falsify it and see if it's from God or not. If you cannot falsify it, and it's something that you have to submit to it, it's from God, 
then accept it wholeheartedly, follow its rule, because that will give you the success of this life and in the hereafter. What is true success? Success in this life or the success in the hereafter? I think success the... should be here and after. Exactly. The hereafter is the ultimate success. Because this life is what? 60, 70, 80, 120 years to the most. But the hereafter, second life, is forever and forever. There will be no death. Either you live a life in hellfire being punished, burnt, tortured, or you live in a life of tranquility, happiness, joy, bliss, felicity. You have to make that choice. Yeah. Does that make sense? Thank you for a conversation, but I have to go now. I know, I know, I know. So it's okay. Dark. Nice talking to you, Alina. All the best. But do consider what I have said and study and, and examine the Quran, the life of Prophet Muhammad and so on. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.